Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of Metadata Showdown, where we put two websites head to head to understand which has the better metadata and user or customer experience. And today I have a special edition because I don't know about you, I love my coffee and I have lots of coffee lovers in my family. And so today we are going to be doing something very super secret, confidential. So if the person I am buying this for is watching this video, turn it off right now and you know who you are. I am actually going to be shopping for a holiday gift for someone in my family that loves coffee, is a co somewhat coffee connoisseur, and I thought, what better gift than a coffee subscription? So if this sounds like something interesting to you, please make sure that you stick around. And if you're just a metadata lover, also stick around. All right, so let's go get started. All right, so I am going to be starting out with Misto Box. Let's go ahead and start our journey. So again, front and center, I want to subscribe. Okay, so starting out, it tells me how much it's going to start with and then how I can actually get started. So I already read how this whole thing works. Okay, so if we select get started, notice it just skipped me through everything that was on this page. What did I miss? That's one thing that I think is a little strange. Uh, this area in the middle here where it's telling me how Misto Box actually works, I can see that being skipped because that was on the main page, but what you'll love, it actually tells you about different things that people really like about this subscription and that was missed, which is I think unfortunate. And this right here, I love the presentation of this information. It's talking about a specific person, where they're from, a little testimonial, and this is what I love the most. It gives you what type of coffee these, these folks were actually ordering. So I can then resonate with whoever this persona is. That is genius, that is lovely. And yet they skipped me right past it with that button. So that's one thing, just caution. If you're gonna do something really nice like this, make sure that people can actually find it and see it. Uh, but you can get this get started each way. So maybe it's not so bad. It actually gives you a, a way to say, okay, I understand this, I'm ready to order at any point in your journey, which is really smart. I really like that. Uh, then it tells you where it's been featured, which is great. And then it actually gets into the nuts and bolts. So let's go through and select what kind of coffee is ideal for this person we're thinking of. So we have black coffee that there's nothing in it. You can see that very clearly because of the imagery. That's another smart thing they're doing here is they are telling you in, a, in an image so you can quickly make those decisions. It's not going to be an arduous process to figure out what kind of coffee. It also tells you that you can select more than one option. This is great because when you get a giant bag of coffee, potentially every month, you might be sharing it with other people. So being able to customize this uh, with multiple options and them telling that to you is also really nice. So black coffee is what uh, the people I'm thinking of are drinking. Whole bean is what we're looking at. And I love that it also tells you you're not signing up for this option forever, which is also great that you can um, think ahead that way. For uh, what is your favorite roast level? I really love how they go through and describe what, what each of these mean because not everyone is a coffee connoisseur. People sometimes need help. So here, I would say maybe light to medium. Uh, I'm gonna say medium because I think it's kind of obviously the middle of the road. The other thing is with these two options you see on the screen, you're seeing a not sure. This is really helpful when you are shopping for someone else, if you're just not sure about something uh, that they would prefer. So uh, what type of coffee? Again, it tells you that you can select more than one. I'm gonna say single origin and blend. Now, I'm gonna ding them a little bit here because you can see I drink decaf. Tiny, very tiny. It's a little, little button down at the bottom. It doesn't kind of fit with the rest of the theme. It tells me that it was an afterthought or they want to hide it. Maybe they don't have a lot of decaf options. So uh, we're on to you, Misto Box. I see, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> How often? Uh, so this is nice, it kind of tells you each shipment contains one 12 ounce bag of coffee beans. 
So what it's doing here is it's telling me that uh, it's asking me how often I drink coffee so that they can figure out how many bags of coffee beans to send to me. So um, am I, do I want something every week, every two weeks, uh, every three weeks? And it tells you how many cups per week. So I'm going to say, uh, because I'm not really familiar with this and I want to just try it out, I'm going to say every two weeks. And then which tier? Again, it's not giving you an exact amount here. It's with a visual. It's showing you one is not so many dollars and one is a lot more dollars. And you'll see things like this on Yelp and others that kind of uh, takes away from all of the um, specific you know, numbers that aren't really part of this decision right now. I'm just trying to say, do I want more or less to spend? That's what I'm looking at. Uh, and then it kind of breaks down. Oh, I love this. You take pride in your coffee brewing or you seek out the best, the best for your coffee. It's very dynamic. Um, I'm, I'm going to say that I'm a, I'm a deluxe kind of gal here. Um, and the person I'm thinking of is as well. Uh, so pay per coffee. Uh, or you can do some different plans. So you can see that the price goes down um, as you go. So I'm gonna say uh, six coffee plan. All right, so that comes out to about $13 per bag. That is a, a lot more expensive than like your typical Folgers or something like that. But for a, a, a local brew kind of coffee, that's not terrible. Um, it's usually like if you'd go to Whole Foods or something, it's between 10 and 13, so that's about normal. And then it tells you um, how how it's all uh, calculated. That's 77 per cup. I love that. It's actually breaking it down so I understand as a consumer what my value is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check out, and if I get this in time, I will update this video with both of these subscriptions and tell you what I think. So let's get to checkout and move over to our next option. All right, so contender number two is trade. All right, so first off, it's giving me its mission statement right away. Save big. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking here, if I order from them, I am going to get some kind of value uh, from maybe buying in bulk or being able to sample things without doing individual shipping. There's some kind of savings I'm going to get. And then I can support small roasters. If that's something that I really like to support, this is really helpful for me to resonate, right? Uh, the other thing is, again, clearly defining with imagery, 450 curated coffees. Aha, now if I was trying to decide between the first option with Misto Box and this, I could say, okay, this one's 450. And Misto Box had, I think it said like, 500 or 600 or something. So they're about even. So maybe that would help me in my decision if I didn't want to order from both. It then tells you, oh, you have flexible deliveries. Aha, Mr. Box didn't tell me that. That's interesting. I that that gives me some freedom. I don't feel like I'm I'm locked into getting something all the time, especially over the holiday season where I may or may not be here sometimes. Fresh to your door. Okay, that's great. Mr. Box also did that and ethically sourced. Mr. Box didn't really highlight that, but I think that's because it's going to be up to individual roasters. Whereas on Trade Coffee, it's talking about they, as a brand, have decided they're only doing things that are ethically sourced. We already know what we want. Get started. Boom, right there. Uh, now it's not telling me I can select more than one. Can I select more than one? No. Oh no, how do I go back? Ugh. Okay, here's issue number one. I don't know how to go back. I didn't know if I could select one or more. Am I going to mess it up? Okay, no, I didn't. Okay, uh, so uh, let's see why it matters. Okay, so all this information. So first of all, they are giving you the um, imagery just like Misto Box did. Great, so that I can see it and say, wait, what? what's a mocha pot? Oh, I see that. I know what that is, so that helps me. But the why it matters and do you use Keurig, blah, 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 all of that needs to be way at the top. Why is it at the bottom? That's not smart. Put it at the top. Uh, and then it does tell you why. I do like that they tell you why. It just needs to be higher up in the uh, in the website. So gonna go with coffee maker. Okay, what is your coffee experience level? Oh, this is interesting. This is different than Misto Box. Uh, you can tell. I don't know. I'm not a coffee connoisseur. Uh, I'm an intermediate stage, and then it kind of defines that for you, which is nice. Do you add any, anything to your coffee? 
Um, I like this, that it's it's going through more details than what Misto Box, box did. Um, but nope, I like it black. But again, did you, did you see that? There was stuff at the bottom of the screen. I never even looked at it because it was below the fold. That is important. Put all your information that is very important at the top of the fold because you don't know how far down people are going to go. Okay, this is nice. It This is telling me what each of these roasts mean. But remember, Misto Box just told me like level of flavor and how much oil. But if I wasn't a coffee person, I wouldn't know what that means. Dark roast, some oil on bean with a caramelized smokiness. Now this is this is fascinating. I read that description and I'm like, oh, caramelized smokiness sounds good. But remember, in the last uh, Miso Box one, I didn't select dark roast because it didn't tell me that. Um, so on this one, 100% not into light roast. Uh, it does give you a defer to you, which again is the I don't know section. How do you like your coffee to taste? Oh, interesting. Okay, there's some little product placement here, by the way, which is nice for you as a consumer so you can kind of figure out what they have going for them. Or I defer to you. Okay, so, huh, hints of something different, but nothing too crazy. <laughs> Take me on an adventure. Okay, let's let's look at what these mean. Something, so I like different types of coffee. This person I'm thinking of for the gift also does as well. It's weird. So they're talking about these are gonna be lighter roasts. But what if I selected dark roast in my last option? Is it gonna overwrite this? That's that. That's confusing to me. I think that I wanna test that out. Let's test it together. So I'm gonna do this and see what do they send us. I'll update you uh, when this, all, this video is out to see did they send me light roast because I selected that or did they honor my first selection and only send me medium? Let's find out. All right, next is, do you buy ground coffee? Okay, so that one's easy. Um, whole bean. Uh, oh, here we go. So remember, Miso Box kind of hid this like way, way under things. But here, this is talking about it right front and center. So that tells me that they have a decent selection for both or they have at least not thought of it as an afterthought. So regular. Okay, so they're not asking me how uh, how often I drink my coffee. They're just saying you're getting this or you're getting that. Um, I did like Misto Box's presentation of that better because it tells you uh, smaller do dollar signs versus bigger dollar signs. It's more visual and interactive. I do like this better where it tells you underneath that if you're gonna go with the um, less expensive, you're getting less options, whereas if you go with the more expensive, you are going to have more options. It's so beautifully laid out. So you have, you know, your brew queue, and you can see that there's nothing in your queue right now, and you can add a coffee. All right, so metadata focus. So let's look at the taxonomy or filters that trade coffee has you can see there's actually quite a lot so different tastes what you might like Ooh, who wants floral yuck uh price region okay interesting so that's where the re that's the region that it came from country okay so here is a criticism what's the difference between region and country uh i suppose this would be like continent and this is the actual country in that continent but Kind of strange. Uh, roaster, so that's almost like, you know, brand name, type, okay. That's pretty straightforward. Bag weight, that's interesting. Oh, I guess that helps you understand, you know, how much coffee you're actually getting. Different ground. Available ground, available ground. I don't even know what this means. So this would be a criticism. Process. So that's interesting that it actually goes through the different processes. I think this is pretty cool, actually, if you want to experiment with things. Certification. So, of course, this is, you know, helping people with dietary restrictions. Helping you under... So this is funny. So cold brew. Cold brew. Seems like the same uh, happened with available ground. So these don't seem to be... If there's only one node, then it's considered an orphan. So you never really want to have uh, a specific roll up in your categories if there's only one child that it would have underneath it. Same with, 
Oh, that's interesting. Decaf and water process decaf. See, I thought that was going to be a one orphan, but it's not. So that's good. And then espresso, espresso. So you can see some of these can just be radio buttons instead of drop downs. Now let's look at the actual information on the product. So, and it's telling me it's a great match based on the profile that I had. Oh, nice. So next roast is tomorrow. Oh, that's really cool. It actually tells you when the roast is, tells you if it's a medium, light, dark, and then the tasting notes. It gives you a little bit about the roaster. Also great. And that's cool that you can actually go directly to the roaster if you want to buy just more from them. And I do love how they have these positioning uh, icons so that I understand what I'm looking at. Interesting. So it's actually telling you like how the whole bean is, is treated, which is really, really cool. And then it gives you the reviews, which this is great that it has so many positive reviews, but normally these would be at the top of, of the of the interface. And then it tells you uh, suggestions. So behind the scenes, this could be an ontology. Actually, something like this with so many different um, aspects of a coffee, where it's from, what it tastes like, how it's made, that actually lends itself really well to creating a recommendation engine off of an ontology. But I suspect probably they are using whichever a decision point that their customers are using the most. Metadata over here on Misto Box. It tells me, it automatically applies filters based on my profile, which is nice. I actually like that. I went through all the effort of doing a, a profile, so it's good that they have something. Um, and I can always change those if I would like. Now, they have a much smaller taxonomy, which might be fine. More taxonomy doesn't always mean better. Uh, it really depends on who is using the interface as well. So it goes through the different types, different roasts, uh, tasting notes, which is, okay, so these are even different. You can see this taxonomy is different. This chocolate, citrus, fruity, earthy. Nothing about floral, although earthy, I guess, could be floral. Uh, so I would actually say I'd give this metadata, at least on the tasting notes, to trade coffee just because there is a very big difference between a different type of uh, earthy could be minty. That comes from the earth. Um, you know, citrus also comes from the earth. Fruit comes from the earth. So it's kind of strange to have earthy just as a bucket. Whereas on uh, trade coffee, they had, you know, floral and, and more specific types, which I think was helpful. Now, this one doesn't have the specific region. So it does seem like co uh, trade coffee is looking at... Uh, the connoisseur who really understands where their coffee is coming from, whereas this one is just telling you basic geographic regions. Again, that might be perfectly fine for the customers that they are working with. Processing, so that's cool. It goes through all the different types, and then decaf. So this is a weird uh, decision. So decaf, and then you have regular underneath it. Um, I would say this is probably the, the lower point uh, of their taxonomy, it doesn't really give you a lot of information and it's kind of misleading to say it's decaf. Let's go in and look at the different information that's on the screen. Now you'll remember that Trade Co. didn't have a lot of information on the product description card before you got into the details. I actually like this presentation better because it gives you point blank, what am I looking at? So this one is baking spices, stone fruit complex, cool tells you when it's going to get shipped and exactly what I'm looking for as far as taste complexity. And that tells me that taste is one of their main decision points for their users because it is so front and center. It does give you the roast, the tasting notes, the different type, all front and center at the very top. This is more condensed uh, on the page than we saw in the trade coffee. And I like this presentation better because it gives this to you in one view. I don't have to keep scrolling through to see things. Now, it gives you a lot of the same information that Trade Coffee gave over here as far as region, variety, all of that. So it's interesting that Trade Coffee decided to make some of these 
available as their taxonomy filters, whereas the Misto box isn't. I would actually encourage both parties to think about adding these as filters because you have the information. It's obviously controlled. This might be something that people want to filter their results by. The other thing that Misto box is missing is there's nothing telling me hey, there are similar coffees to this. If you like this one, there's no kind of recommendation. Now, it might be because they are so depending on that user profile, but I would say that this kind of lacks that metadata and help me uh, decide if I want more. Uh, there's no link to this Barefoot Coffee Roasters if I wanna go find out more about them, if they have their own website. Uh, there's nothing to help me find additional things that I want to purchase, which from an e-commerce perspective is not as strong as you saw in Trade Coffee Company. All right, so my my verdict is metadata-wise, uh, the contenders are both uh, pretty good uh, with the, the actual breakdown of information that they give you. Uh, however, I really just loved the visual presentation and the engagement that Misto Box uh, gave me as a consumer. So I'm going to give the taxonomy win to Trade Coffee and I am going to give the user experience win and decent metadata to Misto Box. And I will let you all know how I like either of these uh, when they all come in. All right, so with that, I'll thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.